Don McDowell recently did an interview with Alyssa Childers and Tim Barnett on their new book on the deconstruction of Christianity. So uh, I'm going to play one clip in this video from that interview. At this point, Tim Barnett has talked about these three big concerns with the construction, and he's introduced the first two. Now he's going to summarize the third one. So we're just going to play that clip, and then I'm going to offer some critical interaction. And then finally, the biggest problem is there's no biblical authority. And so you'll mm. often find the deconstructionist saying, you know, Paul said such and such. Paul was wrong. Paul was wrong. Um, you know, the apostle said or the prophet said they were wrong. They're not willing to use the Bible as any kind, any kind of guidebook. No one gets to tell me what my faith should look like. You'll see that mm. over and over and over again. Okay, there's a couple things in what Barnett says here. And, and frankly, what he says is absolutely outrageous. The first thing he says uh, is that, well, Christians, uh, th these... Uh, these deconstructed Christians, these ex-evangelicals, that they begin to challenge the authority of biblical authors. So they might say Paul was wrong on some particular issue. Now, uh, the issue here is, I think, underlying Barnett's critique of these people, of these ex-evangelicals, progressive Christians, deconstructed Christians, whatever, uh, his, the ground of his critique is a tacit commitment to some sort of human authorial inerrancy in the Bible. In other words, whenever a human author of scripture writes down or inscripturates, inscripturates, writes down some particular text which ends up in the Bible, that insofar as there is a propositional content in there which the human author affirms, that is without error and we ought to affirm it as well. And this is just false for several reasons. So uh, you can begin by, I always like to begin by giving the imprecatory Psalms as an example. If you go through the imprecatory Psalms, you will see that the human author of the Psalm makes many claims, such as that blessed is he who bathes their, or dashes their baby against the rocks, uh, Psalm 137.9, or bathes the, their feet on the blood of the wicked. Uh, that's Psalm 58, 10. So, so what the psalmist is saying in those moments is you are in a state of shalom or blessedness if you can kill your enemies, if if you can revel in the destruction of your enemies. The psalmist prays for for the for that their enemies would be uh, orphans, that their backs would be bent, that their names would be blotted out of the book of life. Uh, time and again, the, the psalmist makes claims like these. Now, um, in my work, I argue that these, because I do hold to a plenary inspiration, I believe that all of these passages are in the Bible for a particular reason, for the formation of the reader, but it all matters how you engage with them and how you explicitly don't engage with them, I believe, is by affirming that everything that the human author says there is proposition, the propositional affirmations are correct, that we ought to affirm them as such, as the human author did. Rather, we critically engage with them. Uh, so we we don't believe, as the psalmist says in Psalm 37, uh, that God laughs at the coming destruction of the wicked, which is a metaphor for God delighting in, having satisfaction in the destruction of human beings. Because as Ezekiel 18 says, that God takes no uh, delight in the destruction of the wicked. Uh, as as First Timothy two four and Second Peter three nine talk about God desires to save all people, God's for so God for God so loved the world John three sixteen and so on. So uh, what happens here, and I hope that you can see that what's coming through here is that there is an internal critique of the voice of the psalmist at points, but it is an internal critique. It is one coming from Scripture itself because we find that Scripture has different voices in it. For example, some voices talk about hating your enemies. Other voices talk about loving your enemies. And then you ask this question. Okay, um, we, we, how do we decide this? Well, the, ultimately, as a Christian, you decide it through the voice and life and teaching of Jesus. It's the most important thing, which is what we call a Christocentric hermeneutic. So Jesus says in Matthew 5, it has been said, hate your enemies. Where has it been said that? Well, throughout the voice of the imprecatory psalmist, for example. It has been said, hate your enemies, but I say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. 
So what happens then is by reading scripture and submitting to the life and teaching of Jesus, you develop an internal critique for the voice of the imprecatory psalmist, and you critically engage with that voice, uh, and then you find different ways to read and appropriate the voice of the psalmist. Now, all of this is a critique and precisely at odds with Tim Barnett's flat-footed statement that you can never disagree with a biblical author, an author of scripture. No, there are times when you have to disagree with an author of scripture, when, when something that they've said is incorrect or wrong. Now, some of the other examples I've, I've given, one that I often give uh, is from William Webb's book, Corporal Punishment in the Bible. He does a careful study of what the biblical authors affirm about physical punishment. Uh, and they affirm the physical punishment of child, children and slaves, children up to the age of adulthood, from young to, to old. Uh, hitting them on the back using a, a whip or a, seb a sebet in Hebrew, which is like a, a hickory switch, uh, leaving scars up to 39 lashes. Uh, these are the, the kinds of the ways of disciplining a child that today we would recognize as false and harmful. And yet biblical authors, some biblical authors affirm false and harmful teachings about how to teach your children and how to raise your children. They are not authorities on how to raise your children. and You should not treat them as such. So the Bible includes false information from human authors about things like ethics and prudential actions and theology, such as God's uh, love versus desire for destruction for the wicked or, or the outsiders or our enemies. And you can go on down the line. You can look at the development of theology throughout Scripture from the earlier authors in Scripture who had a henotheistic theology, they believed there are many gods, but one god, their god, was supreme, to later monotheism, and then the emerging glints of Trinitarian monotheism in the New Testament. Time and again, the picture changes, and when a picture changes, then that, to some degree, falsifies the earlier picture, shows it to have been incorrect and incomplete. So through theology, through natural science and history, we can see time and again we should not always affirm every declaration, every propositional affirmation of a human author of Scripture, which is the exact thing that Tim Barnett is taking issue with, because presumably he thinks we should. So this, these are examples where, where I think a mature and critical engagement with Scripture is one that requires the reader at points to dissent with or disagree with particular voices in Scripture. Now, this leads me to the next issue. Uh, at the end, Barnett says that these ex-evangelicals, these deconstructed Christians and so on, don't treat the Bible as an authority at all. I mean, that is so patently false, because the whole picture I just described to you is a picture of critically engaging with Scripture, of wrestling with Scripture. Now, the name Israel comes from Jacob wrestling with the angel through the night, and it embodies the spirit of what it is to be true Israel, which is to wrestle with God. And what other example can you think of that better encapsulates wrestling with God than wrestling with the text of Scripture, critically reading it through the life teaching the voice of Jesus, and finding points where you disagree with human authors of Scripture precisely so that you can become more like Jesus? This is, this is not a dismissal of the authority of Scripture. It is a serious engagement with Scripture. Barnett is so closed in in his performative affirmation of a particular indefensible conservative evangelical view of scripture that affirms the inerrancy of every human authorial voice, that he can't even recognize the way that ex-evangelicals who disagree with his approach to scripture and recognize it as false and faulty and dangerous, uh, how they are nonetheless seriously engaging with the voice of scripture.